sit over here so no one might see us. Yeah, you mind, I'm surprised you're right here. You mind sitting here, sir? Okay. <laughs> I know this looks a little bit unusual, but uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the reason it, look, it looks unusual, and I'll try to get through this as quickly as I can, but when you and I spoke, you know that I'm here to honor all those that gave their lives for our country, all wars, all branches of service, and all methods of death. And I showed you this flag, the honor and remember flag, which, which you have wholeheartedly you know, supported, as so many have now. Uh, I've been to over 231 meetings and, and have over 70 co-sponsors, but that's not really why we're here. You know, I'm reminded of a quote of John F. Kennedy. And he said that our nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, by the men it honors and by the men it remembers. And you took the time <coughs> to show <coughs> difficult for me, but to show me how you honored your brother and what, what that meant to you, what his life meant to you, and of course the service to our country. And our goal as an organization is to reach out to every family who has lost a loved one, regardless of generation. And today, I would like to honor his name and your family in a special way that is in keeping with our mission, but in a very special and, and, uh, and personal way for you. And I would like to uh, read a certificate to you first and then show you this, this that, that we have for you. It says, this honor and remember flag is presented with eternal gratitude and respect in memory of Lance Corporal Frank Kucinich, Jr. With this flag, we honor this patriot's unwavering dedication and remember his selfless sacrifice. By displaying this symbol collectively as a nation, we humbly recognize the enormity of your loss and respectfully say thank you. And I would like to present you Frank's honor. I didn't know this was going to happen. This is like, I'm rarely surprised by anything, but uh, this is a surprise, and it's really uh, with my heart. I thank you for, for this. Frank uh, is um, you know, he's always in my thoughts, and uh, his service to our country was something that he loved, that he revered. And, and I, in, my, in my office in Cleveland, as well as in, in Washington, I have a shrine to Frank for, for his service. And I never, you know, never forget him. I look at him every day, and I, uh, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, uh, this is just so amazing. But what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, we'll put this flag on a post outside of our office, right next to the American flag, and we'll put this on a post outside of our office, and and let people know that this is a, a very important uh, um, tribute. And I, I, I'm very touched by this. I really appreciate it. This is. My honor, sir. This is um, this is so thoughtful, Elizabeth. This is just amazing to, to remember my brother for what he's done. Thanks, thanks so much. And my colleagues are here. You know, Dennis, your brother will be very proud of you for being the independent man that you are to try to speak out constantly about bringing our kids home because we're wearing them out. And you're a very special man yourself. I appreciate it. Too. You know, Frank. Frank Howard uh, served in the Vietnam era. He was a combat veteran. He left Vietnam uh, as a shattered young man with you know, post-traumatic stress that he dealt with uh, the rest of his life. He uh, spent his, uh, the last 16 years of his life in the veterans' home and uh, trying to deal with the effects of having uh, been in combat. And he loved service. He, he actually took time to serve other veterans' groups as, as he uh, and, and didn't pay attention to his own problems. But, um, but this, this is so meaningful. I really appreciate this. And I, and I thank all of you for being here. It's uh, very touching, very. Well, we understand once a Marine, always a Marine. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> very believe it's number five. Yes, sir. Wow.
can't pronounce it right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if I had your team here too, to add to that again. surprise, and we would have had other members too. I think if the the vote hadn't <laughs> come well, in, this is this is really great, and Thank uh, you. you know, I, I received this in the memory of my brother, yes, whose uh, service to to this country, uh, like all these young people, uh, you know, continue, you know, this is what refreshes uh, our nation, and yeah, restores our nation, and keeps the hope and spirit of our nation. Those who serve. So well, we hope that soon this will be a nationally recognized symbol. Well, uh, we're working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I just talked to Walter on the floor. I was gonna, I was thinking, yeah, we are a dog. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. So very special. It's very special. <laughs> for hosting this occasion and for making this possible for Anna and Lita. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, George Bud. He's going to tell you a little bit about the honor and remember flag, all came to be, and then make a presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. What an honor it is to be here in Pennsylvania. I am in Pennsylvania. All the way from Virginia uh, this morning. And just to be brought to this amazing group, the ladies who have given so much for our country, for our patriots who are here, to the families, and to those of you who have no clue why we're here. <laughs> we like surprises. Uh, just to give you a little bit of history about myself and why I happen to have the microphone right now, is about five and a half years ago, I was given that knock on the door with those five words, we regret to inform you. As my son, Tony, had been killed the day before by a sniper in Iraq. And it are the five words that no parent would ever want to hear. But yet, they are hearing it every day, unfortunately. But what happened from that moment took me on a path, took me on a journey that I never expected. And that search took me to find out how America appreciates sacrifice. How do we as a general public remember those that have given so much? And unfortunately, that journey didn't take me very far because I realized that the military does a great job of remembering. But the veterans do a great job of remembering. But the general public has no clue that we're in Iraq and Afghanistan that we're losing men and women every day. And I found that the term that we use so freely, support our troops, pray for our troops, only comes up to a certain point. And after that, we don't know what to do when we lose one of our heroes. We don't have any tangible way to remember them. And I thought, what do we have in this nation that reminds us that we have loved ones losing their lives for all our freedoms every day. That's got to be important to somebody. And what I found was the only thing, if you think about it, that we have that gives public tribute to our fallen is Memorial Day. That's it. We have no symbols, we have no phrases, we have no banners for the general public except Memorial Day, and Memorial Day has become just another day off. And I don't know about here, but most of this country, the only people you'll find at a parade or a memorial service are the military or the veterans. The general public are sleeping in or going shopping. And I thought to myself selfishly, I want people to remember that my son died for them. I want them to, to know 
that there is a price for freedom. And it's a high cost. And it's one that the families bear for the rest of their lives. And those from past generations will tell you there isn't a day that goes by that they don't remember. So why is it that the general public gets a pass? I can't answer that. But three years ago, I came up with an idea to get the attention of the general public to maybe reinstill some thoughts of that cost of freedom. And maybe to increase the awareness of patriotism. Just one small step. On May of 2008, the Honor and Remember flag was unveiled publicly to the nation. It was meant to be that tangible symbol, a public reminder, recognizing all lives lost in the history of our country, all branches of service, all wars or conflicts, all methods of death. This flag and its symbolism, I'm sure I don't have to tell many of you, but just quickly, the blue star goes back to World War I when a blue star was hung on the windows and doors of families who had someone in active duty. That gold star, we all know, means that that loved one wasn't coming home. That's where we get the term gold star mothers. The folded flag reminds us of a life lost for this country. The flame's eternal reminder and the words we will always honor their sacrifice and remember them specifically by name. This flag was meant for the public. It was meant for the public to fly in gratitude and recognition of all of those lives. But that brings me to why we're here. Why am I telling you this now? It's only to set the groundwork, to set a foundation as to really the importance of what that flag means. Because it recognizes individual lives, not numbers, not statistics. And it, are, it is our goal as an organization to reach out and touch every single family that has sacrificed for this country. And that's why we're here, because you're here to join us, all of us, in honoring two ladies in a very special way because this flag, this flag was designed so that it could be personalized. And I would first like to ask Theta, if you would come up here, please. Does she have family here, or is everybody her family? <laughs> come on up. If you're standing with Theta, please come up. Oh, on that side there. We have a whole group of family members here. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. Tom Lesher is here. He's one of my board members, and he's going to help me with this presentation. I'm going to give him the mic to read a certificate. flag, I need to explain, is folded in a triangular configuration. And it's folded that way to mirror the American flag that was handed at the memorial of her son. But unlike the American flag, which stays folded reverently and respectfully forever, never to be unfolded, this flag is meant to be a public thank you, a tribute to that sacrifice, to be unfolded and proudly displayed. This honor and remember flag is presented with eternal gratitude and respect and memory respect for William A. Lexner. With this flag, we honor this patriot's unwavering dedication and remember their selfless sacrifice. 
By displaying this symbol collectively as a nation, we humbly recognize the enormity of your lives and respectfully say thank you. Signed by George Lassie today, presented the proud assistance. Appreciate you both, our mothers and sisters. I would like Anna to come up. Are you okay or can I come over to you? Tom again to read a certificate. This honor and remember flag is presented with eternal gratitude and respect. In memory respect for John W. Thar. With this flag, we honor this patriot's unwavering dedication and remember their selfless sacrifice. By displaying this symbol collectively as a nation, we humbly recognize the enormity of your lives and respectfully say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lutz.
<laughs> Are you recording now? Yes, I promise I'd be so still. So as soon as we get into 10 minutes, next time they blow the whistle after 10 minutes, it'll happen.
George Lutch is the uh, founder of the Honor and Remember organization. So here's George. Good day, everyone, all you survivors out there. Woo! Listen, I'd like to ask you a favor. I would like everyone who is able to walk closer to this stage because we're going to have a presentation right now that you will not see anywhere else you haven't seen anywhere else and you may not see in a long time. We are gonna honor some families this morning who have given the ultimate sacrifice. They have lost their loved ones in service to our country. So I would ask you to come forward, please, to honor these families who have lost their sons in the war on terror. And let me explain a little bit about how we're doing this and how much it means to this country to remember sacrifice. I don't know if any of you are aware of this, but we've lost 13 military members in the last three days in Afghanistan and Iraq. Not many people realize that. Not many people are aware that there are men and women still sacrificing their lives for us every day so that we can do exactly what we're doing today, having a great time. And we need to appreciate that in a very special way. Please come forward because we're gonna show you something you can't see from a distance, something that you'll want to appreciate. 
and something that you might even want to take a picture of. I lost my son on December 29th of 2005 in, in Iraq. He was in the army. His name was Tony. Now, he was married and had two children. He loved his country. He loved what he was doing. He appreciated the fact that he was able to go over there and serve and liberate a country that was in oppression. After he lost his life, I thought to myself, what am I going to do with mine? How am I going to go on? One thing came very dear to me and I realized that was important. I wanted to know, did he die in vain? Did anybody care? Did anybody recognize it? Did anybody have any idea that he had lost his life? That was important to me. And the second thing that I realized was even more important was that he not be forgotten, right? It's those men and women who have sacrificed their lives that need to be remembered, that need to be appreciated. And so I looked around this country for a way that we as Americans can appreciate the sacrifice of those men and women. What do we have? What do we show? What do we say? What can we display? And you know the interesting thing I found is that most of us, myself included, are okay to remember our fallen on one day a year, on Memorial Day. And you know Memorial Day has become, for most Americans, just another day off, an extra long weekend. So I realized that that wasn't what I was looking for, because you know there's not a day that goes by that I don't remember him. And there's not a day that goes by that these families don't remember their loved ones. And we all live under the freedoms that we have every day because of those men and women. So why not a way of recognizing and appreciating and being grateful? Because the one thing that family members want, they can't have. They want their loved ones home. The second most important thing that we all can do, just everyday citizens, is be grateful. Is to say thank you is to be able to appreciate that somebody sent their loved ones to a foreign land who didn't come home. And it doesn't matter whether it was Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam, Korea, World War II. Every one of those families will have suffered that loss for the rest of their lives. And so three years ago, on Memorial Day, I came up with an idea a way to publicly recognize sacrifice, a way for all of us to say thank you in a very tangible way, and that is with a flag, a symbol recognizing specifically the lives lost in service to our country. Lewis and Susie lost their Marine son in November of 2004. They're here with me tonight. This is the Honor and Remember flag. You'll see it flying over on the side here. We have a table with information. But this flag very specifically stands and recognizes for every life lost in recognition of military history of our country. The red field stands for the blood sacrifice of our men and women. The white field below stands for the purity of that sacrifice because every one of those loved ones went over with a pure heart. Everyone's saying to their, to their family members, don't worry about me, I've got it covered. We know what we're doing, I'll be back. The gold star, the blue star in the center of this flag, many of you may not know, the blue star goes back to World War I when a solid blue star was hung on the windows and doors of family, military families that had someone in active duty. That's so everybody knew that they had someone in the fight. The gold star in the center of this flag is where we get the term gold star families. I'm a gold star dad. These are gold star parents. It means that their loved one didn't come home. The folded flag beneath this, these stars we all recognize as a life lost. A folded flag handed to a loved one at the memorial of their loss. 
and the words honor and remember. We will always honor their sacrifice and remember them specifically by name. Mr. Miller wants to say a few words before we have this presentation I promised you. I want to thank y'all for being here today and thank you for getting up from your comfortable seats and walking up here to get a closer view of this. Uh, a little history. All of y'all know what the POWMIA flag is and what it looks like. It took 18 years to get that flag promoted and authorized and accepted by everyone in all 50 states. Right now, six states have adopted this flag and there's something like 20 or 25 more that are looking into it. Uh, after this presentation is over, I'm going to walk through the crowd and I'm going to hand out little cards with a website on it and we would appreciate it if you would go on your website and sign the petition to adopt this flag. Also, write your congressman, write your senators and help us get this flag promoted. Thank you. This flag is not just a piece of cloth flying in the wind, as you can imagine. This flag is a very reverent and respectful symbol of gratitude for all of us to appreciate those lives that have been lost and the freedoms that we have. But it's more than just a flag flying. It's actually an individual reminder of a specific name because each one of these family members, each one of these loved ones has a name. They're not a number and they're not a statistic. And this flag was designed in a very special way so that it could be personalized. The reason it's folded like this, and I'm showing you that it's folded in a triangular configuration. It's folded this way in a presentation because it mirrors the American flag that was folded and handed to a family at the memorial service. But unlike that American flag that was meant to stay folded reverently and respectfully forever, the honor and remember flag is meant to be unfolded and displayed proudly in thanks for that loss. We're gonna honor today, not my son, not the Miller's son, but another special son. Belinda McCracken is here, and Belinda lost her son in November 14th of 2005 in Iraq. And her son Christopher was a twin uh, with his brother Michael. Both of them grew up together, as you know, twins com competed in many ways. One of the ways that they diverted is that Christopher joined the Marines and Michael joined the Navy. Now, I don't know what kind of conflict that caused, but they went their separate ways. Michael is still in the Navy. But Christopher walked into a house ahead of some of his other fellow Marines and walked into an IED and lost his life. And we want to recognize his life and this family in this very special way today. And I'm going to read the certificate. And Lewis, if you'll open that flag as I read this, in honor of Christopher and in tribute and thanks to Belinda. This honor and remember flag is presented with eternal gratitude and respect. In memory of Lance Corporal Christopher M. McCracken, with this flag, we honor this patriot's unwavering dedication and remember his selfless sacrifice. By displaying this symbol collectively as a nation, we humbly recognize the enormity of your loss and we respectfully say thank you. Thank you all for sharing in this moment of thanks. Please, if you have an opportunity, stop by. We'll talk to you more about the flag. God bless you. Enjoy this day. Thank you for coming out. And you're free to go.
all Marines say, hoorah! Yeah. <laughs>